Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Manu from Piano Sight Reading and in this video I'm going to share some clips from an interview I had recently with Robert Boswell. He's a fellow sight reader from Austin in Texas and he's writing a book on intervals. So you're going to hear Robert talk about the book, what you can expect from it and why he's writing on intervals and why intervals are so important for sight reading and you'll also hear his tips when it comes to learning intervals by ear and learning to identify intervals in the score so let's play that interview you're writing about intervals and why intervals so I started with intervals because I feel it's one of the most basic things that you can learn. It just doesn't get any smaller than that, because when you're doing intervals, you're not having huge chunks of music. You're just dealing with two notes at a time or maybe a few more if you have some harmonic intervals or something, which means well, we should explain what an interval is first. Yes. So an interval, for those who don't know, is the difference between two different notes. It's a type of relationship, and uh, there's two ways of going about naming them. There's a quality, a major, minor, or diminished or augmented. That gives you kind of a, a quality that you can detect by ear that kind of gives a flavor to the particular interval. But the other aspect is numerical, which gives you kind of a numerical distance. And so a one interval is a major second. So the major would be the quality and the second would be the numerical. And when you put it together, you can identify these things through the sheet music and you can also identify it by what you hear. So you can learn to hear these intervals and if you do that, then you really don't need to look down at the keyboard because you can hear whether you're playing the right interval or not. Yes, that's a good point. And why do you think people should read intervals as opposed to just read one note at a time? Well, if you read one note at a time, you're not really reading in a very musical way. So it's like you're reading B, A, C, or whatever the notes are, but you're really not processing it like a real musician would. You're not, you can't um, see the patterns very easily. It's too small to do, uh, to do it note by note. It becomes rather tedious and then um it i think it takes you out of time uh it, it's harder to coordinate that with the pulse and the rhythm of the music and plus you can't really unless you have perfect pitch which i don't you wouldn't be able to tell what it sounds like now this book is it intended only for piano players or can other in instrumentalists use this book as well? That's a very good question. I had not really thought of that before. I think it would be beneficial for everyone. I think it would also be very beneficial to any vocalist, like someone learning to sight scene. That would be very, uh, the ear training exercises are very good for that. Um, the ear training exercises could be used by any instrumentalist. And if someone's like learning piano as a second instrument from their other instrument, it would help, uh, you know, learn their theory. Because I know like guitarists have a real hard time with intervals because they can't visualize it on the on the fret system. It's just you can't visualize it like you can on the piano. So it could be helpful for other musicians. However, the playing exercises, there's two forms of exercises in the book, ear training and playing exercises. And the playing exercises actually cover a huge range because the piano has a large range. So they're really suitable only for pianists. However, you might be able to adapt certain exercises for your instrument and maybe write your own playing exercises based on the concepts in my book. Once the people 
go through the book and they learn about the you know the intervals how they sound how they feel how would they then proceed with sight reading like what do you advise them to do with this okay. information you give them okay so that's a little tricky because there's more to sight reading than just intervals there's other uh, you have rhythm and meter but if we're looking at intervals themselves we can identify the intervals in any piece of music we read and that's something you can apply once you learn it after you finish my book and you'll also be able to the important thing I think is just being able to feel everything because that's going to be your key to sight reading if you can feel where the all the individual keys are with all the relations from the intervals then you really don't need to look down at the keyboard very much and you can just read the music and make those connections so that's what the book is attempting to do and um the application i will say this it's a gradual thing because it does not happen overnight it's going to take some time because there's 12 different intervals and to hear what they all sound like what they all look like and what they all feel like is going to take a, a while it's not something you can even learn in a month it's going to maybe take a, at least a year to learn them probably longer for most people and then to apply what you learn is going to take even longer so it is all a long term process but i feel that this book provides structure for someone to learn this because there's not a whole lot of other resources where you can really learn. There's books on intervals, but not really applied to how they are on the piano necessarily. How do you advise people to learn how intervals sound? Do you have like a, a tip or something yeah okay the traditional advice is like to associate particular intervals with the beginnings of certain songs I personally don't know if that's the best way because uh you you might if you're in a if you ever have to take an ear training exam or something, you may just not remember that particular song at the moment. So it may not help you. My, the ear training exercises in my book, seeing them and seeing them with like the actual interval name. So you're associating the sound with the interval name. I think that's the key. What about for recognizing intervals on in the score? Like what's the best okay. way to go about it so i'm thinking that if you look by the lines and spaces like if you look at the patterns like if if it's a odd number interval like a third or a fifth or a seventh it's go they're gonna be on the same quality what i mean by that is it's going to be line to line or space to space if it's a even numbered interval like a second fourth sixth or an octave it's going to be opposite quality so it will be like a line to space or a space to line that helps a lot because a lot of times you might get confused by something that's one interval off like a fourth or a fifth and so if you see those patterns like that, that can help, like looking at lines and spaces. Also, I think this is where the writing comes in. Like if you're having really trouble reading the intervals, why don't you just go and print off some blank manuscript paper off a computer? And maybe if you need to, you could copy intervals from music or from a textbook, and that may help you as well. There's there's no re real one way, but if you learn from a variety of approaches, I think it helps you. Yes. And, and then the good thing with learning intervals is that once you know how to read those, then reading chords becomes a lot easier, right? Because it's made up of intervals yes i've thought about doing a chord book as well but it's just like uh the the chords i think 
you see so much written about chords because especially with popular music, they're all over the place. So there's tons and tons of books on chords, but I haven't seen too many on intervals for piano. Hmm, that's true. So you're, it seems like you're filling a gap. Like yes. Excellent. <laughs> okay. And is there anything else you'd like to add, uh, like a piece of advice for people who want to get better at sight reading, but they don't know how to go about it? Okay. So the first thing I would say is lower your expectations and uh, because it's not going to happen overnight and also just be real patient with yourself take the time to do it daily I think if you work on it daily that helps but having a specific method about going about doing it is probably the most important thing because you don't see you don't see a whole lot of a structure with most of the books out there on it. So it, I'm going to have like an appendix or at the very end of my book, I'm going to have like a, a, a list of things to consider like right before you sight read a piece of music. And if you follow that, that may help you a lot. Yeah, lowering, lowering your expectation. That, that's a good, very good point. Yeah, because it seems a lot of people like they, you know, they get better with their playing, but sometimes their sight reading lag lags behind. And so if they're trying to sight read music of their level, then it's actually quite difficult. So it's being able to you know, be okay with very simple music to sight read. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed these clips from the interview. If you would like to hear the whole interview, which was around 30 minutes, then do consider joining the Sight Reading Club. You'll find the links and more information in the description. And also make sure you check out Robert's blog. It's called Sight Reading Solutions. It's quite a long address, so you'll also find the link to his blog in the description. Thank you so much for watching and if you liked this video then make sure you like it and you share it with your fellow musicians. Okay I'll see you in the next video. Go and keep exploring!